Okay, hello, my friend. It's Professor, Assistant Professor Mercan Kuvanc. Uh, I am a head of the Depa Electric Electronic Department. Uh, my uh, name is Omer uh, Cihan Kuvanc. So my email address Cihan dot Kuvanc at Okan. LTR. Next four weeks, uh, we're going to continue uh, for introduction to electrical engineering lecture. My room, JQC213. C two one uh, three. My external phone number, 24, 60, no, 60. Yes. Yok, no. This is my new telephone number. I write it to clear. Yes. Okay, today our uh, topics electric drive system. Firstly, uh, we're going to talk about the DC motor drives and electronically commutated uh, motor drives. So, with the uh, using the uh, blackboard system so actually uh, electric machines uh, your uh, third class uh, lectures uh, with professor Najat Tunjai so we're gonna uh, call these are rotating machines uh, we can say for DC motor and AC motor so actually uh, historically DC motor drives have been the most popular drives for speed and position control application uh, they of uh, this popularity, their low cost and ease of control. Their uh, demise has been prematurely induct predicted uh, for many years. However, uh, they are losing their market share to AC drives due to wear in the uh, commutator and brush, which require periodic uh, maintenance. So another factor in the decline of the market share of uh, AC drives is cost, actually. Uh, after the definition of uh, and the market of DC machine, we can uh, say the most widely used electromechanical device is a rotating machine, actually, which utilizes the field to store energy. Uh, the, moreover, the main purpose of most rotating machine is to convert, convert the electromechanical energy uh, to convert energy between electrical and mechanical systems, either for electric power generation as in generators or for the production of mechanical power to perform useful tasks as in the motor or things so rotating machines uh, range in size and capacity from the small motors uh, that uh, consume only a fraction of a watt to large generator that produce several hundred megawatts in spite of the um, wide variety of types size and methods of construction all such machines operate on the same principle namely the tendency of the two magnets to align uh, themselves um, most space is devoted to induction spraynous uh, and the direct current machines in spite of the distinguishing two features uh, peculiar to each class of machines there are several striking similarities among the main kind of machine actually uh, first step uh, you need to know uh, this motor drive system because it is a, a fundamentals of electric machine uh, mathematical equation so <coughs> uh, in inflation adjusted dollars the cost of the ac and the dc motors are expected to do, remain nearly constant for power processing and control ac require more complex electronics it's called as a power electronic circuits uh, making them at a present uh, than in DC motor drives however uh, the cost of the drive electronics power electronic system continues to decrease uh, therefore AC drives are gaining market share over DC drive. maybe you know the servo motor and also uh, brushes DC motor etc uh, in electrical vehicle application and the uh, renewable energy system option actually uh, we uh, try to select the permanent magnet machines 
for our application. So uh, here there are two important reasons to learn uh, about the C drive system. Actually, uh, first, a number of such drives are currently in use and this number keep increasing. Secondly, uh, the control of AC motor drives emulates the operating principle of DC motor drives. So therefore, knowledge of DC motor drives forms the uh, first step in the learning how to control AC uh, drives. So, and then in a DC motor drive, DC voltage and current are supplied by a power processing unit uh, to the DC motor. Maybe we can write uh, a block diagram for uh, this uh, example. Firstly, we have electrical source. Sometimes it's a grid, sometimes it's the electric vehicle battery. We're gonna uh, say electrical source, sometimes it's a battery grid, etc. So after that, power processing unit for electric drive system, power processing unit. It's called as a, a power electronics unit. Power processing unit is called as a two, two topics, switch mode converters, switch mode power supplies also line commutated tire store converter and then dc machine firstly and then we're going to talk about the AC machine next week. DC machine two type, PM machine. Also field winding. Also mechanical system. Here you can uh, see the there are two designs of the DC machine stator stators consisting of either permanent magnets or a field winding. Uh, the power processing units can also be classified um, into two categories: switch mode power operate a high switching frequency, uh, as we'll uh, discuss the uh, third year of your education in power electronic lecture or line commutated uh, tire store converters as like uh, other one in power electronic lecture you will see two years later uh, so in this uh, course uh, content our focus will be on small servo drives small dc motors which usually consist of the permanent magnet motor supplied by uh, switch mode power uh, supplies so uh, at the end of the, this uh, lecture uh, a brief discussion of electronically commutated motors is uh, included as a way of reinforcing the concept of current commutation, as well as a way of introducing an important class of motor drives which uh, don't have the problem of wear in commutator and brush. So maybe we can uh, write a DC motor type. DC motor we have here, firstly, a shaft. And then here brush winding permanent magnet also north source this, these are permanent magnet we say pm also here shaft 
here we have brush here commutator also here winding so uh, it's it shows a cut away view of a dc motor actually it shows a permanent magnet stator a rotor which carries the armature winding a commutator and the brush in dc machines the stator establishes a uniform flux uh, actually phi f in the air gap in the radial direction the uh, subscript f is called as a field <clears throat> it's a, uh, in this machine uh, stator uh, established a uniform flux vf in the air gap i say again the radial direction if permanent magnets like those uh, shown the cross section in uh, this figure uh, air gap flux density as established by the stator remains constant it cannot be changed a field winding whose current can be varied can be used to achieve an additional degree of control over the air gap flux density so also in dc uh, motor that the rotor slots contain a winding called the armature winding which handles electrical power for conversion uh, to mechanical power at the rotor shaft in addition uh, there is a commutator affixed to the rotor on its outer surface the commutator contains copper segments which are uh electrically insulated uh, from each other by means of the mica or plastic you know the coils of the armature winding are connected to these commutator segments uh, so that the stationary dc source can uh, supply voltage and current to the rotating commutator by means of the stationary carbon brush which rests on top of the commutator uh, the wear due to the mechanical contact between the commutator and brush requires periodic maintenance, which is the main drawback of the DC. Actually, uh, you can uh, search using the Google or Internet uh, about DC motor uh, cut away uh, picture. Maybe you can uh, analyze that then. Uh, the basic principle that uh, operating principle of DC machine that govern the production of steady electromagnetic torque what's the uh, steady we have two operation region steady state and transient this is our main uh, topics uh, for uh, electric machine uh, working area so a rotor coil in a uniform radial field established by the stator was supplied with a current which reverse direction every half cycle of rotation the induced motive force in the coil also alternated every half cycle you can image a winding here your alternative current your brush act as a uh, changing of direction commutator actually here we have positive alternance in minus region your brush converted as a positive region using with brush and here we have uh, from ac waveform here we have dc waveform using the brush these are dc waveform these are brush and commutator effect okay and then the uh it's called as a, the induced emf in the coil also alternated every half cycle from p to 2 pi in practice this reversal of current can be relied on DC machine uh, using two commutator uh, segments, S1 or S2. We have in a DC machine two brush, for example, we call this a S1 and S2. 
this is the commutator segment. Also, we have two brush uh, segments, B1 and B2, for example, uh, using the uh, notations commonly adopted in the context of the DC machine. In, uh, in the books, you can uh, see brush B uh, commutator S. So the armature quantities are indicated by the subscript A and the density of the stator established established flux that crosses the two air gaps is called the field flux density bf field flux density so whose distribution as function of phi uh, you can think the the uniform flux density bf in the air gap is assumed to be positive under the south pole and the negative under the north pole there is also a small neutral zone where the flux density is small and is changing from one polarity to the other we will see how the commutator and the brush in the primitive non-practical machine uh, convert a dc current current A supplied by a stationary source into an alternating current in the armature coil. So this uh, cross-sectional view of this primitive machine, looking from it, we can uh, draw it. You can image This is your winding. So here we have an S, no, B1, B2, and it's here, S is here. Here we have current source, IA, B1, B2, commutator S1, S2. Let's try to rotate directional uh, clockwise. Wise. This is ter terminology clockwise, counterclockwise. This is omega m rotating speed. Here are your back end. For the position of the coil at theta zero, the coil current I1 is positive and the counterclockwise force is produced on each conductor. And then rotor has turned counterclockwise by theta 90 degree. The brush are wider than the insulation between the commutator segments. Therefore, in this uh, elementary and a simple electrical machine, the current uh, flows through the uh, commutator segments and no current flows through the conductors. In this region, the coil undergoes commutation where uh, its current direction reverses as the rotor turns further. Uh, compared with the theta zero, the roles of conductors one and the one that are interchanged, hence at the theta 180 degree are negative and the same counterclockwise torque as that theta zero is produced. This discussion shows how the commutator and the brush convert a DC current at the armature term terminals of the DC machine into uh, current that alternates every half cycle through the armature coil. So in the armature coil, the induced EMF also alternates every half cycle and is rectified at the armature terminals. The current and the induced EMF, the coil are uh, plotted using the um, sum equation as a function of the rotor position theta. The torque of the rotor and the induced EMF 
at bring at the brush terminals are uh, loaded using the some simulation uh, programs using for example matlab etc uh, maybe you need to know the matlab for your educational life matlab simulink our fundamental simulation program okay it's just an uh, example and it's just a hint for you so away from the neutral zone in the sim machine the tor the induced emf expression in according to some basic equation electromagnetic torque to be f l r e also e a back emf to b f l r omega m okay now here uh, l is your effective conduct length R is the radius of conductor. This is electromagnetic torque. This is armature, sorry, back MF. BF, you, you know, I set you. Flux density omega m rotor speed i a is armature current here uh if the Compared uh, the torque, electromagnetic torque, and the EMF form of the four coil winding, for example, a DC machine, one coil winding, it's clear that the uh, pulsation in the torque and in the induced EMF are reduced by increasing the number of coils and slots. Practical DC machines consist of a large number of coils in their armature windings. Therefore, uh, we can neglect the effect of the coils in the neutral zone undergoing uh, current commutation and the armature uh, can be uh, represented as a uh, some following conclusion regarding to commutate reaction. Uh, the armature current, i.e. supply, the wires equally uh, between two circuits connecting in parallel each circuit uh, consists of half of the total conductors which are connected in series all conductors under a pole have current in the same direction the respective forces produced on each conductor are in the same direction and add up to yield the total torque the direction of the armature current i.e determines the direction of uh, the current direction is independent of the direction of rotation actually uh, therefore the direction of the electromagnetic torque produced by the machine also depends on the direction of ie also the induced voltage in each of the two parallel armature circuits uh, and therefore across the brush brushes in the sum of the voltage induced in all conductors connected in series all conductors under a pole have induced emf of the same polarity uh, so the polarity of these induced EMFs depends on the direction of rotation. Actually, the EMF polarity is independent of the current direction. So now we can calculate the net torque produced and the EMF induced. In DC machine, uh, let there be a total of NA conductors.
yes we have some internet connection problem and then oh, we continue again and a conductors each of length l are placed in a uniform and radial flat density f then the electromagnetic torque produced by a current i e over two can be calculated by multiplying uh, the force per conductor by the number of conductors and the radius r actually tm and a l r b f how much current for two in a machine the values of n a l and r are fixed it's your uh, design criteria and a l r this is first step in the uh, Flux density BF also has a fixed value from the magnet machine. Yes, Adam, we have intent connection problem. If it is repeat again, uh, I can uh, arrange some uh, internet connection problem. Okay, uh, these are fixed. Flux density BF also has fixed value in permanent magnet machine. Therefore, uh, we, we can write the torque expression. Torque expression here, Tm, electromagnetic torque, actually, Kt, armature current, where uh, kt equal and a over 2 lr bf as unit newton meter over ampere this is our first expression this expression shows that the magnitude of the electromagnetic torque produced is linearly proportional to the armature current i.e the constant kt is called the motor torque constant KT is called as a motor torque constant. Generally, motor torque constant is given in motor specification sheets from the uh, your uh, data sheet PC machine. You learn your torque constant. So also another constant. Uh, at a speed of omega m, omega m is actually a radian over second, omega m, rotational speed, radian over speed. The induced EMF, EA, across the brush can be calculated by multiplying the induced EMF per conductor by an A over two, which is the number of conductors in series in each of the two parallel connected armature circuits, uh, EA, and a over 2 l r b f times omega m using the same arguments as before for the torque we can write the induced voltage expression e a e omega m where g a and a over 2 l r b f this expression you need voltage over radian over second. This shows that the magnitude of the induced EMF across the brush is linearly proportional to the rotor speed. It also depends on the constant Ke, which is called the motor voltage constant. Ke, motor voltage constant. Uh, and it's specified in motor uh, specification sheet. The flight of this induced EMF is reversed if the rotational speed M is reversed. Uh, actually, we should note that in any DC machine, the torque constant, KT, and the voltage constant, KE, are exactly same. same. Uh, so, 
Lastly, we can write KD equal KE equal NA over 2LRBF. <coughs> Maybe next uh, we're going to say about armature reaction. Uh, armature reaction, actually the armature windings on the rotor with current flowing through it also produce flux lines as uh, you can show in maybe you can write the google uh, flux lines of dc machine these you can uh, show two sets of flux line phi f and the armature flux phi a are at the right angle to each other maybe we can uh, draw it These are our flux lines. Uh, Spur impose the two sets of flux line and show the combined flux lines uh, in the air gap. The flux phi A and the phi F Adding a certain portions and subtracting the other portions. If the magnetic saturation is neglected, as we have assumed, then due to the symmetry of the DC machine, the effect of an increased torque produced by conductors under uh, higher flux density is cancelled out by the increased torque produced by conductors uh, under lower flux density. The same holds true for induced EMF. Therefore, the calculations of the torque TM and the induced EMF uh, in the, uh, I said, the starting of uh, lecture. Actually, here, uh, another step, DC machine equivalent circuit. It's often convenient to discuss a DC machine in terms of its equivalent circuits. Uh, I think the uh, basic electrical circuit of DC machine, armature resistance, armature inductance, EA back EMF, so positive minus also rotor shaft coupling GL. These are your current IE electromagnetic torque over KT. Armature voltage, RA armature resistance, LA. Inductance EA key e omega m plus minus. Also, we have inertia direction electromagnetic torque omega m load torque TL. Here we have GL. Okay. Here it's figure which shows conversion between electrical and mechanical power. So in this figure, an armature current IA is uh, flowing. Uh, this current produced the electromagnetic torque TM. 
basic equation of electromagnetic torque, you know KTIE is necessary to rotate the mechanical load at a speed of omega m. Also, across the armature terminals, the rotation at the speed of omega m induces a voltage called the back EMF, EA, KE times omega m, back electromotive force. So, on the electrical side, the applied voltage, armature voltage VA, becomes the back EMF, E, and causes the current IE to flow. Recognizing that there is a voltage drop across uh, both uh, the armature winding resistance RA, which includes the voltage drop across the carbon bar, and the armature winding inductance A, we can write the equation of electrical sides VA. A plus R A I L A D one T. So on the mechanical side, the electromagnetic torque produced by the motor overcomes the mechanical uh, load torque T L to produce acceleration D omega M over D T uh, one over electromagnetic torque minus low torque this is simple electrical equation this is simple mechanical equation of a DC machine here J equal is the total effective value of combined inertia of the DC machine and the mechanical load Inertia, inertia is um, consists of load inertia, load inertia, the motor inertia. Uh, note that the equations of the electric system and the mechanical system are coupled here. Here we have coupling components, is mechanical components. Uh, so the back EMF EA in the electrical system equation uh, depends on the mechanical speed omega m. Actually, here we have two critical idea. The back EMF EA in the electrical system depends on mechanical speed omega m. It's critical. So the torque electromagnetic torque in the mechanical system depends on the electrical current, i.e. So we can write as a simple EA is depend on omega m torque, electromagnetic torque depends on i.e. So if you uh, control the uh, motor speed, you can attach the back EMF. For example, in your electric vehicle, for example, um, decrease your speed, you need to decrease your back EMF value using your power electronic circuits, etc. If you need to torque, for example, you have a ramp, you want to uh, increase the torque, you need to increase current demand. This is the first critical idea uh, on the electrical machines. Uh, another critical idea, power torque equation. Actually, power, electrical power, torque, and speed. You can imagine, uh, imagine a vehicle, your, your vehicle, here your gear increased, why? Because you need a torque, gear from 3, for example, to 2, 
why you need a torque also you want to decrease your speed so torque and power power is uh, torque times Uh, probably your question is about the, uh, your question is about a uh, unit I think what power P power unit W energy J okay, power unit at W energy Joule so omega rotor rotational speed radian over seconds okay one of them w energy one of them omega okay probably your question about the unit and uh, indications okay so uh, in steady state with a voltage armature voltage applied to the armature terminals and the uh, low torque tl supplied as well after these equations i e electromagnetic torque equal low torque over kt also omega m A over K E because ah okay v vehicle speed speed from your high school education linear speed it's a simple thing kilometer. Hour. Omega rotational speed. It depends on radius of your uh, motor shaft, radius of your wheel. Okay. Rotational speed. V is linear speed. Omega rotational speed. Uh, it, uh, we are learning no it is your high school education it's a university <laughs> we speed it's correct y speed but linear speed v over x t is depend on time omega is rotational speed and also capital omega energy is not a what what is a power power P unit watt capital omega capital W energy joule where linear speed kilometer over hour omega rotational speed radian over second okay So uh, we're going to continue uh, the steady state torque speed characteristic of uh, DC machine. We can uh, solve a question, maybe Ex simple example. A pro DC motor you image, uh, we have some parameters, armature resistance, 0 that uh, 35 ohm, K, K, e, K, T equal 0 0.5 for a torque of up to 9 newton. Upload its steady state torque speed characteristic for following values. Armature voltage is uh, 100 volts. Let's consider the case of uh, this machine. Uh, armature voltage 100 volt, ideally at no load speed. 
uh, and no load condition, zero torque, so armature current equals zero. K is a constant. Ke electrical constant, Kt torque constant. And this question, omega m equal armature voltage over Ke electrical constant. We have a book. Yes, I I, I will upload. I will upload today for your uh, this lecture. Professor, what will? We will upload your slides and books. Okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. It's a simple lectures. Don't worry. We will upload. Also, you have recordings. Okay, omega m, uh, armature voltage over Ke, armature voltage 100, your uh, back EMF constant, electrical constant also, it's called 0 0.5, so 200 radian over second, your uh, rotational speed, at a torque of 9, 8 newton meter, I, A, Newton meter over 0 0.5. What's the equation here? Torque, electromagnetic torque equal torque constant times IE. Torque constant 0 0.5. Current, armature current 8. Sorry, electromagnetic torque 8 Newton meter. So we need to calculate the current. Current is here. Uh, 16 ampere so omega n equal 100 volt minus r a times current over 0 0.5 so your omega m radian over second uh, after that, we're going to uh, write the characteristic of DC machine. So, electromagnetic torque, omega m, no load speed operation, say no load torque operation, 200 radian over second, or it's also called as a RPM, RPM revolution per minute. actually uh it's called eight newton meter respect to our calculation it's rpm no load condition our rated speed 200 rpm 8 newton meter load condition our last speed 188.8 rpm this is our characteristic of torque speed characteristic of our dc machine also um, maybe lastly we can say about the regenerative braking actually uh, electric machine actually work as motor and generator today uh, dc machines are seldom used as a generators per se but they operate in the generator braking actually in electric vehicle for example regenerative vehicle is used to slow the speed of dc motor drive in electric vehicle most of which use brushless dc motor drives actually because dc motor is a major technology and there is inefficient technology so uh, but the principle of brushless dc and the dc machine are same uh, regenerative braking is converting kinetic energy associated with the inertia of the vehicle into electrical energy which is fed into the 
batteries. We call that the air regenerative braking operation. It's also called as a four quadrant operation. Initially, uh, let's assume that a DC machine is operating in steady state as a motor and rotating in the forward direction. So a positive armature voltage, armature voltage which overcomes the back EMF, back EMF EA, is applied and the current IE flows to supply the load torque. The polarities of the induced EMFs uh, and the direction of the currents in the armature conductors are also uh, work as a motoring and generating. So one way of the slowing down this DC motor driving electric vehicle is to apply mechanical brakes. However, a better option is to let the DC machine go into the generator mode by reversing the direction in which the electromagnetic torque uh, is produced. This is uh, accomplished by reversing the direction of the armature uh, shown to have negative value. Uh, since the machine is still turning in the same direction, forward or and the counterclockwise, the induced back EMF remains positive. The armature current direction uh, can be reversed by decreasing the applied voltage VA uh, in comparison to the back EMF uh, actually that is armature voltage smaller than armature back EMF the current reversal through the conductors causes the torque to reverse and oppose the rotation now the power from the mechanical system energy stored in inertia is converted and supplied to the electrical system uh, Actually, not that the torque, electromagnetic torque, KT times IE, depends on the armature current IE. Therefore, the torque will change as quickly as IE is changed. DC motors for servo application are designed with a low value of armature inductance. Therefore, uh, current and electromagnetic torque can be controlled very quickly. It's a critical uh, idea of uh, DC machine design. So also uh, for today, it's enough. I think you have another lecture, some students. So do you have a question? Uh, please ask me uh, in this lecture or after lecture using my email address, right? Uh, starting of the lecture, my email address. If you have a problem about the department, etc., please write me. Uh, and from this week, we have three course for introduction lecture. After that, uh, another professor, uh, Didam Kuvanch Dredi, continues electro electronic uh, application. Next week, uh, probably we have, uh, yes, I will upload slides, Erdem. On your exam, about your exam, I have, uh, okay, thank you. When will take me term? Uh, midterm date probably announced in this week in my uh, calendar. I will write you. Um, wait me. Uh, wait me. Wait me. Where is my calendar? Huh. Yes, exam three of oh, introduction. Okay, wait. Yeah, yes, 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 you are right. Uh, three of December, you are right. Exam will be online. Exam will be online. Our exam calendar and schedule uh, announced on our uh, all learn system probably. 
Abdurrahman nerede gördün şeyi? Nereye koymuşlar? Nereye koymuşlar Abdurrahman şeyi? All örneği Ha. You can access the Okan website using your exam schedule. Okan ve Okan University website. Uh, topics actually your lecture recordings. This is your fifth or sixth uh, lecture. I don't know. A uh, professor Nejat lectures and my lectures probably. Maybe the Dan Kuvanstrel lectures. Don't worry about it. You have uh, course recordings. You are just uh, responsible about to these recordings. Recordings. Don't worry. <laughs> It's a very simple example. Don't worry. Okay. See you next week, my friends. Do you have a question? Lastly, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, bye bye. Görüşürüz arkadaşlar. Hoşçakalın. See you.